Hey there, it's Laurel here for Blitzy, and today I'm going to show you how I made this card that does some die cutting and then also some other simple techniques along the way. So to start with, this is just a strip of regular white cardstock, and that is a background stamp that I've had in my stash for quite some time. I think a text background stamp is awesome uh, for this technique. So I'm inking that up with some Versamark ink, and then I'm going to heat set that with some clear embossing powder. I think adding that text uh, will make a great addition to the card. If you don't have a text background stamp, any kind of anything with the design on it, I think would be great for this because we're going to end up die cutting this out in just a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and heat that, set that with my heat tool here. The key to any good heat set is to just let your heat tool heat up for a good 15 to 20 seconds beforehand before you take it to your paper. I am working off of the Ken Oliver Best Ever Craft Mat, by the way, and I love it. Even my paper stays in place when I heat emboss, which is great enough to fly all over the place. It's fantastic. So these are some large alphabet dies by Lawn Fawn called Louis ABCs. I love them because I love the size. I think they're fantastic. So I'm just placing them on my card. I just want to make sure I have enough room. And then I'm going in with the Distress Ink Minis. Uh, if you don't have the minis, regular pads will work just fine. Any ink pad will work for this. I'm just using Distress Inks because I like the colors. I am using Dusty Concord as the purple, Peacock Feathers as the teal, Ripe Persimmon is the orange, and Fossilized Amber is that yellow color. So I went ahead and applied that just down to that cardstock, just uh, inking up enough uh, so my die will, will fit on it. So again, any inks that you have will work for this. And because we heat set that background, that text image that I used here is going to resist any ink that we put down. So I went ahead and ran that through my die cutting machine and you're left with these super fun uh, letters with that design in the background and I like all the different colors. So now it's time to just assemble the card. The card's going to be pretty simple because I wanted these fun letters to, uh, to be the highlight here. I say dude all the time. I don't know why. I just do. I catch myself saying it all the time. So to help me keep these letters straight when I hear them down, I grabbed a T-square ruler. Anything that you have that's straight will work, a regular ruler, a piece of cardstock, anything to help you keep it straight. I'm not really so good at that. <laughs> so I'm fiddling around with it. I'm, I'm figuring out the placement of color. I want to make sure that I have the colors where I like it. And now this is my favorite adhesive. This is the Ranger Multi Matte Medium. I just put it directly down onto that Ken Oliver Craft Mat there. And then I'm dipping my letters into the glue there. I love this glue for two reasons. It's really strong and it dries completely clear. It is like invisible. I am so messy with glue. This stuff is oozing out all over the place. You can kind of pick it up on the D and the U. You can see it oozing out, but I will wipe some of it away and it's going to dry completely clear. You will never know that's there. It's fantastic. It's cool. I love it. And that's what I, I tend to use for anything, any kind of wet adhesive. That's all I have is the multi matte medium. Right now, I, I didn't line that up perfectly. There's a little bit more white hanging off on the right than the left, so I'm going to go ahead and trim that down. This panel is going to be actually four and seven fifths, so four and three quarters wide. So now it's time to add. There's a lot of white going on here. <laughs> so I'm taking this stencil by Tim Holtz. It's the dot fade stencil. And I've got a foam blending tool here. And then I'm going to use the shaded lilac mini distress ink. And I'm just going to sponge on some of that design onto the card just to add a little something, just to take away some of the white, just to break it up just a little bit. Any color would work, any ink would work. You don't have to use Distress Inks if you don't have them. And I just like how that added a little bit of something. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down to a teal piece of cardstock that I had there. And then I'll take my paper trimmer and trim that off to where I'll have a quarter inch mat around it. So this panel will end up being five inches by five and a half. The card height is five and a half. So that's five by five and a half inches. Now I have a top folding card here, so I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down. Again, a quarter inch panel will be uh, around that. I kind of wing this card, so I'm making my own custom size here. I wanted some white showing to the left and the right of the card, and you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So again, I'm going to grab some, grab some adhesive. Oh wait, no I'm not. I'm sorry. I decided I didn't want that white background there. I thought it would be better to have some pink. So this is the color Picked Raspberry, and I'm just going in and inking up my card base here. This is a great way to create your own colored cardstock, is just to ink up the white cardstock with whatever inks you have. And it'll ensure a perfect match here. 
So I almost adhered that down and noticed I didn't go further enough along on the uh, right hand side. So I'm just going to ink that whole side up with that pink picked raspberry. And then adhere that down and then I'll trim that down to match. So everything will have a quarter inch around it. So this card is five and one quarter by five and a half total. It's a top folding card. And one more thing I decided to do is this is that Irresistible Pico Embellisher, and this is in the color Shimmer. It has a tiny bit of shine to it, and this also leaves a nice uh, little bit of dimension raised on there. So I went ahead and adhered that down. It also has a no-clog tip. It's got that needle in the cap. You just kind of stick that back in there. That was the hardest part of this whole process is getting that little needle in there. I can't thread a needle, so... <laughs> So I left this in here so you can see how I fiddle with it, but I love this feature because it prevents it from being clogged because it's going to go in, down in there and push all that that uh, shimmers back down into the bottle, so no clogging. I hate when I get clogged tips. It just drives me bonkers. And then that's going to be the card. I'm just going to clean up my surface, and that's it. So some very simple die cutting, some heat embossing, a little bit of inking, a stenciling, and then adding in that Pico embellisher in the color shimmer, and that's the card. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you so much for joining me today.